Live from New York City, it's the Wendy Williams Show. What are you doing? The kids have come to play today. You won't believe what I'm about to tell you. With all due respect, have several seats. My girls are always turned out. I give it to you straight, no chaser. Now, here's Wendy! Here we are! Thank you so much for watching our show. Say hello to my co-host, my studio audience. I'm doing okay today. Let's get started. It's time for hot topics. talk, Phaedra's ex-husband, or soon to be in my mind, in my mind, Apollo Nida is in some serious trouble behind bars. Well, according to our friends at Radar Online, he was caught using a smuggled cell phone. Now, Phaedra is not part of the smuggleization. <laughs> Neither is the president or vice president, <laughs> their children. Um, so because of this a smuggling of the cell phone, he was transferred into general from general population to maximum security oh. for 18 months. Oh. Now mind you, he's already in a family-friendly prison in Fort Dix. Originally, um, Apollo was in uh, Kentucky in a more secure prison but they transferred him to Jersey, to Fort Dix, and we all thought that that was, well, okay, you know, a soft prison term. But Apollo, here's the deal. If you know you are a reality star person, then why would you do anything weird? Because you know everyone is looking at you. Your fellow inmates, the wardens, the, you know, everyone is looking at you to mess up so that they can well, have a story for Hot Topics. <laughs> it was just bad judgment, and I don't know who smuggled the phone, but my thing is, um, you guys at the prison, why don't you dust the phone for fingerprints <laughs> and figure out who was holding it? Now, he's still on social media, Twitter, Instagram, the whole bit. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. There's one right there. There's someone still posting for him. So maybe that someone knows something about this phone being smuggled. Either way, it's not a good look. Although, solitary confinement. <laughs> being the homebody that I am, 18 months. That's a little long. Yeah. But oh, there's nothing wrong with a little solitary confinement for any of us. <laughs> Just, you know, to get in touch with ourselves. Uh, so Apollo, you were dumb for that. Uh, and then <clears throat> there in uh, Fort Dix in South Jersey, Joe is there. And, and Joe has been there for two weeks, and he also apparently has been moved already to maximum security. Oh, oh well. <laughs> you know why? Because he did something that a lot of us would have done the night before going to prison. He went out and got dumb, wasted. <laughs> 
And, and like, cause to me, like if you're gonna go to jail, what are you supposed to do the night before you go? Like I would go out and then have the paddy wagon pick me up. <laughs> like, <clears throat> like, pick me up at the club and take me right to the hooshkow. Okay. Let me just get through this. But apparently he did arrive reportedly like out of his mind and he was also acting belligerent. Now see, that's where it gets, you know, very dicey. You know, um, I guess maybe don't you know who I am or you know, get off me, get off me. Orange, this is not my color. <laughs> and so, so, I do blame Joe because he was supposed to stop at a certain point to the point where he was just a little nice, not acting belligerent. So people are thinking in the prison that he's you know, throwing his thumbs up at the legal system. So they threw him in maximum. Oh well. <laughs> Let me ask you though. How many people here would go out and party the night before? Yeah. I think that's a normal occurrence, but when, when you get to don't you know who I am, that's a whole nother level. So too bad Oneida, and to, or Nida, um, you, uh, and, too and too bad Joe, sorry. So Courtney Cox and her boyfriend, um, her fiance, they split up and now they're back together, allegedly. Well, well. Well, his name is Johnny and he plays for a band called uh, Snow Patrol. And uh, they split four months ago, but now they're back together. And just cause you get back together doesn't mean the old problems don't still exist. And the old problem is neither one of them could deal with where are we gonna live? You know, she's a California girl and he's Irish from Ireland. Irish. And so, you know, he wanted to live there and she wants to live in LA or, you know, the surrounding. So because they're back together, doesn't mean they'll stay together because the same problem still exists. Now I understand getting back together with someone, but if you don't squash the original problem, like on the first date where you're back together, then it's still gonna awry. And, and she's got her daughter Coco. Coco is now 11 years old, Aww. knows Johnny, and this has got to be confusing for Coco. And you know, her ex-husband, David Arquette, has gone on and gotten married, has kids and a whole new family. And Courtney, Courtney's my age, so you know, she might feel you know, a tug at her heart, like, all right, it's time for me to get back in the game and I don't wanna get in the game game, I still have feelings for this guy. But Courtney, you can't raise Coco in Ireland no. because her dad is here. Yeah. Here. <clears throat> and, and Johnny, you are a rock star. You travel the world, like probably according to what I read, like 50% of the time, these rock stars are always out on the road and stuff. So why can't you just live in LA and just make it nice for your, you know, Courtney and also Coco? Life and Style Magazine says that Jennifer Aniston is now um, the one who's pushed Courtney to reunite. Not for nothing, Jennifer Aniston is not the one to take romantic <laughs> advice from. I mean, no, I like Jen. I, I like her, but she hasn't had the best luck with men and, and, and stuff. So, you know, but, but she pushed Courtney to get back together with this guy in the meantime. 
Hopefully in that advice, she gave the advice to Courtney, which is find out in the first date or first three dates what he's planning to do with his living thing. Because otherwise they're gonna be back in the same thing. Ge geography plays a big part in relationships. I always say that, you know, you can't live, like imagine giving up your citizenship here and moving to Ireland. It sounds romantic at first. <laughs> oh my gosh, the grass is green. <laughs> the hair is red. <laughs> the skin is alabaster. <laughs> I'm sure the food is good. They make some good cheese over there in Ireland. <laughs> However, as soon as your man goes on his um, tour, you're left by yourself. Now what are you gonna do? You know, there's no 7-Eleven. <laughs> there's a Starbucks, I'm sure, because they're everywhere. But, you know, I, Courtney, proceed with caution. Okay. <laughs> Are you OJ'd out? Yes. Like you're done? Well, I'm not. <laughs> I, I, I'm not. I'm not. <clears throat> there are two things that I always stop for on TV regarding real life people or families. One, right off the top of my head, anything Kennedy. I love it. I, I, I love it. I watch it, I love it, I love it. The other one is anything OJ. Because in my mind, he did it but I just wanna see what people are gonna say, okay? Well, Martin Sheen, Charlie's father, is producing a six-part docu-series for the ID channel, which means I'll be watching. <laughs> ID. Um, it's called OJ is Innocent. Well now, you might not have known this, but... Um, Martin is a conspiracy theorist. And he promises to show us hard evidence to prove that OJ did not do it. And where did he get a lot of his hard evidence? Between crime watchers and also his son, Charlie. Well now. Now you know, <laughs> after midnight, you know when Charlie's feeling nice and he calls his father, <laughs> Dad, I just had this wild thought about the OJ thing. And his eyeballs are rolling around in his head, you know, and the girls are all, you know, around and Charlie's feeling smart. <laughs> talking to his father about this. Um, I'm going to watch this because I still believe OJ did it, but I wanna laugh at, at how they're gonna try to say OJ didn't do it. And I know the OJ series, you know, on TV and whatnot, but I can't get enough, so I need more. Hard evidence, OJ is innocent, airs early next year. I'm there, I'm there. So Empire is being sued for millions of dollars. <laughs> Dumb lawsuit. But here's the deal. There's a woman named Sophia and she's, mm-hmm. And Sophia is claiming that Empire stole her entire life story to create the character of Cookie Lions. Yeah. Um, you, well, no, 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 don't, don't look at the, the actuality of them looking alike or not. Just listen to what she's saying. All right, the lawsuit is claiming that Sophia says that, number one, I'm a former drug kingpin who went to jail and so did Cookie. Number two, I put a hit out on a man. And so did Cookie. <laughs> this is such a ghetto story. <laughs> uh, 
Number three, you know, she says, I straightened my hair before Cookie did hers. <laughs> Hi, people. Uh, number four, Sophia says, she's known to slap and smack people. And so does Cookie. <laughs> and finally, Sophia is claiming that she is a prolific user of the words bitch and hoe. <laughs> and so does Cookie. Oh wait, there's one more. Sophia's saying that she loves to wear furs and diamonds and feather boas, and so does Cookie. Okay, well, Sophia, I'm assuming you're like. <laughs> Sophia. In the early 80s when crack was really prevalent and we're assuming that's when Cookie got caught up and then locked up, you know, the, the character Cookie. Um, Sophia, every fifth house on a lot of blocks in the world has a, had a Sophia back in the early 80s. So, you know. You're wasting the judge's time, uh, Sophia. It's a cute story, but you're not gonna win this one. And, uh, and uh, Cookie Lions, rock on. You are like a lot of women from back in that day, but no, Sophia, there's no lawsuit here. But you look cute. <laughs> so, there is a new Vegas residency announced, and I'm all about it. It's the boy band, Backstreet Boys. You don't care. I care. Yeah, I want it that way. Uh-huh. And I'll tell you why. Because, first of all, I think that this is definitely gonna do well. And I bet you Jennifer Lopez and Mariah Carey and Britney are all going, damn it, man because they're the only guys out there right now. Like, you know, these five guys, this is where everyone's bachelorette party will be. Yeah. Number one. Right? Right? It's like feel good music. It makes you feel young. Like back in the day, you go with your girls, whether it's a bachelorette party or whether it's a girls weekend or something like that. And plus there are five of them, so it's not like only one that you lust, it, like there's five of them. I think this is terrific. It's only for a test trial, like nine weeks, what'd you tell me, eight weeks? Yep. Something like nine that. Nine shows. Nine right. shows, mm -hmm. it'll go on longer. Uh, their first album came out 20 years ago. The youngest member is 36, and the oldest member is 44. And there are women in that age group that just want to relive, but they want to relive with people their own age, not like a Justin Bieber. This will be a hit, I predict. Go Backstreet Boys, go! Yeah.